So for Muslims, Islam begins with the original human beings. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve, according to the Jewish, Christian, and Muslim traditions, right? And even the Hindus, you know, some of the Hindus believe that the original human's name was Adam, right? But his original name is not as important as just the reality that he was the first human being. And the word Adam in Arabic, right. this Afro-Semitic language, this African Semitic language, literally means dark black. Right. It has two basic meanings, dark, black, and the surface of the earth. Right. Right. And this indicates two things about Adam. One, that his physical being came from the earth. Right? And we see that when we decompose, we come, we become dust again, right? Ashes Hot to oil. Dust right. to dust, right? That's right. But then also the color of that of that clay, the color of that clay uh, was black. And that makes perfect sense because in Muslim tradition, Adam was made from earth, from every, every part of the globe. And when you mix different colors together, right. when you mix all the different colors together, what do you, there's only one color you get. Yeah. Black, right? yeah, not white. <laughs> yeah, never, you never get white. You yeah. know, white is the absence of color, right? Right. Unless you're dealing with light, right? right. Then it flips. Let's delve into that a little bit, Absolutely. just for a few moments, in terms of, of meanings, because I, I remember you posting something years ago about, mm -hmm. for example, you were, you were highlighting in martial arts how the black belt as opposed to the white belt. The black represents mastery. Yes. In the Arabic language, Saud, black, connected to it, Sayyid, it actually means, like we say, Sayyidina, our master. Yes. So you have these, even the modern term Sudan, yes. uh, you have this terminology and, and you, you kind of hit upon it. Well, you did hit upon it earlier. I mean, I look at language sort of like, um, you can excavate language. You can excavate language and look at terms and trace the history, not only of people, but you can trace the history of the perception of people. Mm -hmm. This is obviously how they saw the world because this is how they named things. Exactly. So if, exactly. if you can a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so that, that was a sermon I gave called Islam and the Liberation of Blackness. Mm. And it was very well received um, at the Atlanta Masjid and around the country. You know, and I, I remember one time this brother called me up from Florida, just crying. Mm. He was weeping. Elderly brother, too. Yes, sir. And, and he had seen the, the recording and he was very grateful. You know, it was mm. grateful to Allah Ta'ala uh, that this knowledge is getting out now. Yes, sir. And I do hope it becomes a part of our curriculum you know, at our Islamic schools and our masjids and it becomes more mainstream. Uh, but, you know, what, one of the things that I mentioned and, you know, just to tie into this, I'm really happy that you wanted to, you know, touch on this, is linguistically, Blackness in Arabic, again, this African Semitic language has a completely different connotation than it does in English. Blackness in Arabic, as you said, aswad, soda, is connected to mastery. The word for mastery in Arabic is tasawud. It literally means, like if you wanted to translate it literally, right. it means to internalize a state of blackness. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know? And so, again, when we look around ourselves, and you, we find this across many cultures. I'm not going to say it's in every culture, but we find in many cultures, when you become a master, not just proficient, but when you reach a level of mastery where you know pretty much everything there is to know about your discipline or about your art or about your science, when you're able to teach others effectively, and transmit that to the next generation, the 
If something in the human soul associates that, symbolizes that with the color black. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I add to that? Because I, I, I didn't think of this until you, because you just mentioned the tradition about the different soils. Right. And, and it would make sense if, 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 you know, like in Islamic tradition, we have these polymaths that they master grammar, mm -hmm. the tafsir, literature, the hadith, etc. So it's like the mixing of all of these colors right. in this one person. So now you have blackness. Right. Exactly. I love yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I did, I did some martial arts when I was younger. Mm -hmm. You know, when you rise up through the ranks, you ultimately get a black belt. Yes. A judge wears a black robe. Like many yeah. of our people have heard this before. Uh, when I was in Mauritania, if you saw a black tent in the desert, mm. you knew that that was the tent of a scholar of the highest caliber. Mm. Not everyone could live in a black tent, <laughs> you know? And, and so what does that mean? What does that mean? What it tells us is that, so it tells us two things. Number one, that in Afro-Semitic languages, and as you just said, in their perception of reality, blackness was associated with leadership, not slavery. That was a corruption and a deviation that came later on because of certain historical factors. Right. But initially, the original connection was with leadership and mastery and blackness. Now, that same word also means darkness. But as, I, as we already discussed, darkness doesn't refer to color. It refers to light. So darkness is the absence of light. Mm -hmm. Right? Now... The other aspect of this is that you'll find in Muslim Sufi traditions, in the metaphysical teachings of Muslim scholars, and I don't remember, I don't know if I spoke about this during that sermon, but I have an article about this that's on academia.edu called B Bilal and Beyond. Mm -hmm. Bilal, the black light and beyond. Know yourself, know God. Something like that, right? Mm -hmm. I start with the verse in the Quran, the ayah in the Quran. It's not really a verse, it's a, a part, passage in the Quran where God says, and I'm, I tra I'm translating, indeed in the creation or in the, you could say in the form or the structure of the heavens, I'm sorry, uh, of the heavens and the earth and in the variety of your languages and complexions right. are signs for people of knowledge, of deep knowledge. Mm -hmm. Now, when you read this ayah, when you read this passage in the Quran, there's a lot that we can get out of it. But I just want to zero in on one thing in particular. God says that your languages and your colors, your the variety, the diversity, the multiplicity of human languages and human complexions are signs, they're ayat, for people of knowledge, mm. the alimin. And an ayah or a sign in Arabic is a proof that points to a higher truth. It's a proof that with reflection, will help you arrive at a truth that's beyond the proof. So what is our color pointing to was my question. So you can take this also in a very, you know, uh, mainstream Muslim reading. It's a sign of God's power. It's a sign of God's will. It's a sign of God's knowledge. It's a sign of God's wisdom. Mm -hmm. And that is all true. But we also know that everything in creation is, is, is a symbol, is symbolic. It has meaning. Right. So is, and, and everything that God does is with wisdom. So what is the wisdom behind giving Black people 
dark people, dark skinned people, melanated people, our complexion. 